Nebraska Medicine and the Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center provide care for both adult and pediatric patients. We understand that the needs of pediatric patients are different than the needs of adults. Your healthcare team is made up of many members who specialize in the care of our youngest patients, including doctors, nurse case managers, and advanced practice providers. This team meets regularly to discuss each patient to be sure their needs are met. In addition to this team, there are many other services available for our pediatric patients. These services include music therapy. Music therapists use live music to achieve non-musical goals. Children have opportunities for relaxation, self-expression, and processing of life events during music therapy. This therapy can also help reduce pain and nausea while promoting active engagement in the environment. Children can learn to play an instrument and make positive memories. Music therapy is healthy, positive, and fun. Child life specialists help children and their families get through life's most difficult events. Armed with a strong background in children and family situations, child life specialists encourage coping through play, planning, education, and self-expression activities. Pet therapy is a guided interaction between a child and a trained animal. It also involves the animal's handler. The purpose of pet therapy is to help your child recover from or cope with a health problem or mental disorder. Hospital teachers support your child's development and educational needs through individual sessions, collaboration with home districts, and service referrals. Support also includes parenting coaching and advocacy. The Early Learning Hospital Teacher supports your child's developmental and educational needs through individual developmental play-based sessions. The Early Learning Teacher will typically see your child one to two times a week. During these sessions, they will address your child's strengths and needs and develop strategies to promote developmental growth. The Early Learning Teacher can also make referrals to local early development programs so your child is able to continue educational services within your home community. Physical and occupational therapy are available to work on your child's physical abilities. They may assist in developing a daily exercise program to maintain strength and endurance. They also focus on maintaining the skills needed for daily living and working. Psychologists help children and their families adapt and manage feelings during intensive treatment. The psychologist also provides support for individuals wanting assistance with behavioral techniques to help with coping. Referrals to these services are offered to patients, parents, and siblings if needed. The Pediatric Blood and Marrow Transplant Program it, it involves a whole host of people, um, from case managers to nurse practitioners to the nurses on the floor. The physicians on the floor uh, and myself are a small component of the entire team, um, from pharmacists, nutritionists, child life specialists, on and on. Um, a whole host of people that are involved in your in the child's care here. When you drive up to this um, uh, Buffett Cancer Center, you just feel comfort. You feel, you get a sense of the Chihuly, we're here in the Chihuly behind me, and, and it's, it permeates through the whole building. It's really an environment of healing um, and a team effort, a, te a team approach. I'll say the other people that are on the team is the people who clean the rooms, the people who bring you your food, the people who um, are there and you'll meet every single day are also entirely part of your collective team to help you get through this. I think as parents first come in or as patients and children first come in to see us in the initial steps of transplant, it is information overload. Um, you meet, I mentioned all these people that are part of our team and we introduce you to all those people and it can be quite overwhelming for families when they first start to first grasp the concept of what the heck is a stem cell transplant, but then this new building, all these new people, all this information is coming at you. And my biggest piece of advice in the initial stages would really be to take a deep breath, take it one day at a time, and know that your questions are not stupid questions. They're, any question you have is a great question. Ask it and never hesitate to tell people to pause for a second, pull back, explain it again. Don't feel like you have to know everything and remember everything that we tell you. Um, it's a long road, it's a relationship that we build, and there'll be plenty of time and lots of questions, um, and we'll answer them all, it just it comes in time. My job is to put your fears at ease 
And um, even if it's a test result or a uh, I'm nervous about this procedure, anything I can help explain to you uh, to better that process is what I'm here for. I always tell people this is my dream job. I think I have the best kept secret job in this facility. I, we get to know our patients and their entire families so well from siblings to parents to grandparents um, that get to come to appointments and celebrate with us. And we get to see the patient usually pretty sick before transplant happens and something that they need so much. And then uh, we get to see them through the transplant process and then get over that hill and get better and better as time goes on. And we get to see them so often in the beginning that it's just really neat to see the progress and cheer on the patient with their family. One of my favorite things is our yearly appointments that we have with patients that are 10 years off transplant or, I mean, even two years off transplant that you forget about or forget all the stuff they went through. And then you read the last note and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember them going through this and look how far they've came. And then the things that they're getting to do and the normalcy that they're living now and just remembering how it does. It's such a long process and it's such a tedious process to go through. But then once you get over that um, little hump, it it is it can be wonderful. Having to go through all that so young, like right in the middle of high school, all of my friends were like able to go have fun, go to sports games, and then I was stuck. So I remember feeling a bit like frustrated and sad about it, but my mom was always there with me. And so we would like play games and just talk about things. And my nurses even were able to hang out with me and talk about what was going on and my friends were able, cause it was before COVID, so all my friends were able to come up and they came up about once a week and hung out and we watched movies and played games and things like that. But child life also really helped. They brought me like things to color cause I love coloring and then movies and just suggestions to do while I couldn't be with my friends.